What's going on guys? How you doing? How's your week been? Um, hopefully you guys checked out my last video. This is part two um, with the last video that I did. Um, <clears throat> last video I gave you a quick synopsis about my life, you know, but I want to give you like a little full story in the few minutes that I have with you guys. So uh, let's get straight to it, you know. Um, for me, I'm 29 years old now. For me, I'm, I was very easy to make friends, whether it be at work, whether it be um, uh, in the street. Normally, I talk to people in the street. I don't know. That, maybe I'm just weird like that. I don't know. Um, and also in church, it was easy for me to make friends in church. Uh, whatever church I went to, I was always friendly with people. That's just the type of person that I am. That's just how, that's just how I flow, you know? Um, because I truly believe that if you be nice to people, people will be nice to you in the long run, you know? Um, sometimes, sometimes it's, it's a little, it's a little difficult because you really want somebody to be your friend, but the person has reach out to you, right? That's the, that's, I think that's one of the hardest things that I had to deal with. And for me growing up, I've always felt that, that people didn't like me. So... So no matter how many friends I had, I could have had a hundred friends within the, within the church I was going to at that time, uh, and I would still feel that ninety of them didn't like me. Well, I feel that the whole hundred didn't like me, and it's just something that that I was dealing with with myself, and I don't know why. Uh, sometimes even now I even deal with the same with that same issue too. So for me, I've always felt that people really didn't like me, and for me, I gravitate towards people like. For me, I want to know what you think about me. For me, I want to know how you feel about me, because that would determine um, that would determine how I am in our relationship. You understand what I'm saying? So, so a lot of times, so a lot of times, if if I feel that you're gravitating to me in a good way, then then I would feel like, wow, me and so and so, we have a relationship. Just because the way that this person is gravitating towards me, just the way that um, we're vibing, just um, the way that we're hanging out, what we're doing, whatever the case may be, and a lot of times, <clears throat> a lot of times uh, in church, uh, I didn't really feel uh, that I was vibing with people. Yeah, there were people that was that would tell me, "Oh, you know, we love you, we this and that," but it was just a lot of times that I just didn't feel. Um, that loved. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't feel that I was getting the love that that I that I truly wanted. And so for me, a lot of times, that's how I became depressed. That's how I became um, wanting to kill myself, wanting to end my life, wanting to not deal with life in itself. Because I've always thought that people hated me. I always thought that people didn't like me. I always thought that I was just this fat, chubby kid. And nobody even cared for. Even to this day, sometimes I even still think that. But it's just something that I need to get over myself, you know. And I think that's probably why so many relationships that I've had have ended. Uh, I'm not going to put the whole blame on that person. I'm going to say that majority of times it can come from me. Majority of times, you know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not perfect. I don't think anybody is. Um, if you are perfect, let me know. Let's have a conversation because I want to know how you did it. But, but a lot of times when we're, when we, especially for those who do feel depressed, for those who do feel down, for those who do feel um, unappreciated, unvalued, and feel like that, that you give so much, but you receive so little in return. That's one of the hardest things ever, you know? We can always feel that we're giving, we're giving, we're giving, we're giving, we're giving, we're giving, we're giving. and when we don't feel that in return, we, we feel a certain way or we act a certain way or we, we say, wow, I do so much for this one person or for the church or for whatever it is and they don't respond in the way that I want them to respond. And that's that's the problem, you know, because it's, especially if you're going to go to church, especially if you're going to do things for God, number one, things have to be done for God. It can't be done for you, can't be done for the pastor, it can't be done for the bishop, can be done for the deacon, it can be done for whoever, whatever, 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 whoever, whoever, whatever. It has to be done for God. So now if we do it for God, 
then we know that we're doing it in the right way. And no matter if you feel happy or sad, whether when, when you're doing it, you got to know that you're doing it for God. You're not doing it for man. You're not doing it, please man. Uh, you are doing it for God. So, so now, uh, when I when I was when I was always getting depressed, I would try everything just to take away my life. I would try everything just to ease the pain, just to uh, not cope with life, just not to deal with uh, life in it, life in itself, and and so I I would use everything, and nothing worked. I'm try I'm telling you, I would use. Uh, bathroom cleaners. I would use knives. Uh, I would walk in front of traffic without looking. Just walk straight. Uh, I call it walking by faith, which is totally wrong. <laughs> but that. But yeah. And because, like I said, I didn't value life. I didn't value it to to the full extent because I felt that I wasn't loved. I felt that nobody liked me. And I truly feel that in today's times. In today's churches, um, the real world, uh, wherever, I feel that there are people like me who struggle with that and who are struggling with that and who don't know how to get help and who doesn't, who, it's not the fact that they don't know how to get help, it's just the fact that, that they want to talk to a particular individual, that particular individual is either one, busy for them, too busy for them. Um, two, the person is unavailable for them. Um, three, uh, the person doesn't know how to deal with what they've been given just now. Um, and four, uh, just to make it even, uh, four, I, w I would definitely say it's it's just the fact of that um, the person who's going to that person, uh, they want to feel that the information that you're giving isn't going to be spread out, isn't going to be spread to the past is going to be spread to the deacon. Is not going to be spread to this person, this person, this person, this person, this person, this person. And I feel that that's why most people don't share why what they're going through in church. So most times when you walk into when you walking into church, most times you're you're asking somebody, "Hey, how are you? Haven't seen in a while. What's going on?" And they say, "Oh, I'm good. Oh, yeah." God loves me, so I'm I'm rejoicing in his faithfulness. I'm rejoicing in his goodness. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But are you really good? Are you really good? Can you really say that you had a good week? Can you really say that you had a, you had a good month? Can you say that you had a good year? No, probably not. Um, because if you had a good year, if you had a good this, 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 there's always going to be a problem. Always. And that's why I truly say that if you're feeling depressed, if you're, if you're cutting yourself, if you're if you're walking into traffic, if you're doing all this, just know that, um, just know that God, God does care for you, and your life does have purpose. Your life does have meaning. We, we, we tend to think that our lives are invalid because of whatever we face in our past, because of whatever we're struggling with now. Um, maybe your, maybe your dad left, left the family after so long. Maybe, maybe your mom has left the family after so long. Maybe. Maybe your brother, maybe your brother died, and nobody has come to your aid and help you. But let me tell you this: you find somebody to speak to, whether in church, whether outside of church. You find somebody to talk to. You find somebody to tell what's going on, because we do not need another person dying because of depression. We do not need another person dying um, because they were rejected. Uh, look at all these stars; they have money, they have wealth, they have. Okay, even though money and wealth are the same thing, um, they have all of that, and sometimes what they're lacking is happiness. Um, there was a uh, there was a, an article in the book. I don't have the book now. I let someone borrow it. They never returned it. I don't know who it is. Actually, I do know who it is. I'm lying. I do know who I do know who has my book. Um, but in the book, um, Hugh Hefner, somebody asked Hugh Hefner a question, and the question was. Um, out of all the all, out of everything in life, what is one thing that you wish you had? And he said, true happiness, true love. That's what he had. You mean to tell me the man who created Playboy, the man who created the magazines that made men happy, 
what he was missing was true happiness and love. Go figure that one. Um, so like I said before, if you're struggling with whatever you're struggling with, depression, um, rejection, um, loneliness, whatever it may be, get help for that. Uh, if you want, you could hit up my email, um, hit, hit me up in the comment section and let me know. Um, if you, if you see this on Facebook or something like that, if you see it, uh, wherever you may see it, just know that you don't have to struggle with it by yourself. You don't have to struggle with it alone. And a lot of people like to go through life alone. And guess what? That's the wrong way to do it. That's the bad way to do it. Um, I've done it sometimes doing it alone because I felt that no one was there for me. But in the end, I had to realize that uh, my life does have meaning. That's number one. Uh, my life does have purpose. And meaning and purpose, um, I can do it with God's help. So whether you are a Christian or not, uh, I would say find, find God. Matter of fact, yes, find God because he's reaching out to you and you're blindly rejecting him. So whether you are a Christian, whether you're not, and you're going through depression, you're going through rejection, you're going through everything, just know that there's help for you out there. Just know that you can go to somebody for help. Um, it doesn't always have to be a pastor. It doesn't always have to be. So it could be a regular person, a regular janitor, a regular person that just cleans up somewhere. And you, you just talk. Go to your barber. The barbers, they love to hear somebody talk, you know. Um, but find somebody and, and talk with them so that they can help you out of this. Sorry that the video has been long. It's just something that I've been, that I've been dealing with myself. So... Uh, like I said, go find help. Go seek help. That's the most important thing. Uh, love and peace, guys. Um, I'll definitely come out with another video. I don't know what I'll talk about next. I'm going to see if I can talk about something meaningful. Even though this is kind of meaningful here, you know? But uh, let me know what you guys think. You know, if you struggle with this, let me know how you got help. Maybe I could talk about that next video, you know, how you got help out of it. I told you how I got help out of it. So, um, so just know that, and know that nobody's going to really, uh, validate your value. The only one who validates your value is you. So you need to value your validation. So your stamp of approval is one of the most important things. So, uh, once again, love and peace. Uh, if you're struggling, if you're struggling, struggle. If you're struggling, get help and seek help don't do it alone alone is one of the worst things you can do so let's let's go forward people backwards is not an option take care